Tanix have been releasing some pretty decent hardware recently, such as the Tanix Max and the Tanix Mini, both very similar devices. Now, the Tanix Mini brought us the very first look at their Alice system that they call it. And actually, that firmware is really, really good. A lot better than some other cheaper boxes that we've reviewed. Now, Tanix have been releasing a lot of updates as well. One of which is a really cool piece of firmware that brings us LibreLec as well as Android all rolled into one. Now in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install that and install it onto your Tanix Mini or your Tanix Max with the S905W processor. As well as that, there's a bit of a treat for you other guys that maybe own a random S905W, maybe you've got a B-Link W95, maybe you've got an X96 Mini or even an MXQ Pro with a S905W processor inside it. That is because I've been tinkering and it actually installs onto these boxes as well. Now, I can't guarantee that if you guys are out there and you like to tinker and you know how to understand how to recover your box, this is the video for you because you can now install this dual boot system with that really good Android firmware and obviously KZAX port of LibreLec for the S95 processor. Anyway, my name is Matthew and you're watching another tutorial by the MXQ project. So we need to go and grab our Tanix firmware. You need to go and sign up and give me an email address and they shall send the download links to your email account. Now you've got two options. You can use the image file and you can use that with USB burning tool. This is what this tutorial will be aimed at. Or you can use a zip file and use the OTA updater app which is inside the actual firmware on your Tanix Max or Tanix Mini. So once you've done that, you've downloaded your file, it's 1.5 gigabytes in size, so pretty big. It's going to take a number of hours. And then the next thing you need to do, load a USB burning tool, load the firmware into the system, and then you need to connect your Tanix device to your, to your computer. Now that's a pretty simple process, but I do find that Tanix devices or other S905W devices sometimes don't actually need the AV reset button held in. You simply connect your USB melt to melt cable directly into it and it should connect and the USB burn until it should recognize it and just start burning it, if that makes sense. So anyway, once you've done that, it might take about six minutes to actually burn the image onto your Tanix device. And then we can move on over to the TV and turn it on. So let's take a look at the actual system itself and how do we use it. So once it's all installed, etc., it might take a few minutes to actually do the initial boot. But once we've done that, we can see obviously the Tanix system here, with the Alice sort of launcher. I do like it, it runs nice and smooth. You've got a lot of options for display and everything you would want from an Android system. It's obviously Android 7.1.2 Nougat, which is the latest operating system available for these boxes. And yeah, everything's great. I also suspect Netflix will run pretty well as well, although I haven't tested it myself. Now to actually get to the LibreLex system, we can just click on the power button and you'll see boot to LibreLec. And we'll go into there, you'll start the initial boot sequence for LibreLec. That might take a few minutes. Now LibreLec, if you've never seen it before, it is an operating system built to purely run Kodi. And Kodi runs amazing on this operating system. I suspect, like I said at the start, this is KZAX port. There's no way Tanix have done this. They've literally just taken KZAX port and attached it to their Android firmware. Which is absolutely fine, I've got no issues with that. It's just a shame they don't credit KZAC at all from what I can see in any of the actual documentation on the website or here or anything like that, which is a shame, but there we go. Now, if you shut down LibreLec and then restart your box, it will boot to LibreLec. If you shut down being in the Android system, it will go back into the Android system. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually choose between the two of them when you first start up. Say you start up in Android and you will have to shut it down and access the power button menu if that makes sense to go to LibreLec and vice versa and stuff like that. It's just a shame when you don't when you turn on the box there's no like grub menu or something like that to actually select between the two. But you know maybe in time they'll implement that in some way. So like I said at the start of the video, I've got this running on four different boxes. I've got it running on the MXQ Pro 4K with the S905W processor. Remember, 
S905W, not S905 or S905X. The S905W is the latest cheap processor by Amlogic, and that is mainly put into cheaper boxes like this newer MXQ Pro. Yes, I know it sounds like the MXQ Pro from years back with the S905. It's not the same, okay? Just be aware of that. So you guys with an MXQ Pro with the S905, no, don't attempt it, all right? Just don't. I've also got this B-Link W95, and it installed onto that and works perfectly. I've also got this random X96 Mini. Again, it's a very small device, and it just runs perfectly on this. I suspect all these boards are very, very similar in terms of design and specifications and stuff like that. I mean, the W95 has two gigabytes of RAM, and it installs onto that fine. And it also installs onto this one gigabyte X96 Mini. As well as that, I've got this totally and utterly random S905W box, and it installs onto that absolutely fine now as well. Although, guys, come on, I can't guarantee this at all. If you understand how to recover your box, then please go ahead and try this. If you do not, please don't, because you're just going to give me a hard time in the comments, and it's entirely your fault if you mess things up, all right? But apart from that, just be careful. Attempt it at your own risk, but... If it works, fantastic, because it is a really good piece of firmware and it's very interesting having that LibreLeck and Android system. I really hoped you enjoyed this. It was a bit different. It kind of just came out of nowhere, actually. Just on a Sunday afternoon, I was playing around and figured out this firmware was not only good and installed onto the Tanix very, very easily, but as well as that, it installed onto all these different boxes as well. Hopefully Tanix don't put themselves out of business by making firmware for everyone else's devices. But there we go. Thanks for watching guys. My name's Matthew. You've been watching another tutorial by the MSU Project. And don't forget to check out the website, msuproject.com, Facebook group as well, as well as the Twitter account, at MSU Project. Thanks again guys, and we shall see you very soon.